Good evening, lovely tubers. My name is the White Mexican, and welcome to Market Watch Investments. I have a plethora of cards that I'll be showcasing for you guys tonight. These will be my personal selections, and I do hope that you enjoy. Getting things kickstarted tonight is going to be Mango Smasher X. It's going to be a little bit of a different variant video today. I'm going to be going over cards that I believe need rarity updates. These are cards that I really appreciate personally myself, and I think they're more than noteworthy of getting rarity upgrades. So as I was saying, Megalo Smasher X is going to be the first. Still to the day, this is surprisingly a solo print common donning from Structure Deck Diner Smasher's Fury. And this card's really cool. I mean, standard stats, level 4, water, dinosaur, 2k beater. Really, really great. Uh, has fantastic artwork, and this needs a, ser a secret rare rarity update, I think would be just gorgeous in this card personally. So that's going to be the first card. Um, again, this is just a common, so there's not really much to go over as far as price points on this card. But it would definitely be a shoe in for a secret rare variant, in my personal opinion. So that's going to be the first card. Next is going to be Harpy's Brother. So this has actually had a name change. This uh, Harpy's Brother is the original name. And it got renamed to Sky Scout, I believe. But this is the original print, uh, OG print, Feral Servant Generation 1. I think this would be another really great card for a secret rare slot. Personally, uh, this card is extremely iconic. It, this, amongst many uh, other vanilla, was the first 1800 level 4s, non tribute monsters. And it's got really cool artwork. Again, it's part of the whole Harpies collection package. And. Uh, there's a lot of just history merit alone on this card, so I think this card would be really, really great for a secret rare update. Next is going to be Labyrinth Wall. So this is another very iconic vanilla normal monster from Generation 1 era of Yu-Gi-Oh! And these are all commons. You can see the, even the original print here. Magic Ruler was the, uh, came as common. These are, all, these are all commons. And I think this, again... Uh, secret rare variant would be really really nice maybe even a super rare but more specifically secret I think this card has seen an, a, enough play during generation generation one era of gameplay as well as just being another iconic normal monster card so I think this is definitely noteworthy of having a secret rare reprint personally myself seven colored fish amongst Harpy's Brother, again, just a, an extremely iconic Generation 1 vanilla normal monster. Again, um, the backbone of uh, attack power was 1800 for non-tributes for, for, until Labyrinth and Nightmare when Gemini Elf was released as the first 1900 attacker non-tribute. So, uh, really, these were just, you know, pretty much staple cards in the standard uh, Duelist deck. So, um, four variants here, all common, originally, of course, coming from Generation 1, Mel Raiders. Uh, and this would just look great with Secret Rare specifically. Again, this, like, the coloring of this would just look really, really great in Secret Rare foiling to me personally. So this is another, again, iconic Generation 1 card that I really believe deserves secret rare treatment personally myself next is going to be uh, be gone knave 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 i think the case on however you pronounce this original prints going all back to, all the way back to generation one ioc invasion of chaos this is actually a really cool card i think this is um th i wanted this video to be a kind of a blend of kind of underrated cards but then also more specifically hone in on, on the rarity upgrades like obviously the these cards like this is a little bit more playable with like dinosaurs obviously it's a little bit more modern but like harpy's brother labyrinth wall seven colors you're not going to run these in a deck these are not going to see competitive play their time has passed during their prime in generation one they were very iconic cards and they're very sought after cards very playable cards back you know when the game first started not anymore, but because of that merit, that's why I specifically I'm showcasing them for rarity updates. Whereas this card, it, I think it could potentially still see see play. I think this card is um, 
underrated i think it's an underrated card personally so um and i think it, it deserves because i believe it's underrated for what it does i believe that it deserves a, maybe a super rare uh definitely not ultra rare please not ultra rare but a secret rare or a super rare i think would be ideal for this maybe like an ots super or a subset secret rare would look really really great so if you guys don't know again um four va common variants so definitely in need of a hollow foil print and this is the text of the card right here. I think it's a pretty nice uh, a floodgate continuous trap. And, you know, it's got that, that old school, like, era style artwork, which I'm really into a lot. Next is going to be Dark Factory of More Production. So, a couple different variants. Original being a rare from Savage Strike. And then we got the 2020 Lost Memories, uh, which was a downgrade to a, a common and then uh, another common from one of the structure decks. So I think this card would look gorgeous in Secret Rare. It's got pretty cool artwork. It's got the uh, Goblin Dude here. And I think, again, another underrated uh, Continuous Trap card. When you're running decks and there's a plethora of, of decks that you want to pitch the graveyard to uh, trigger effects for, for monsters, which is, um, you know really cool and I, I just think that this is it's got good artwork and i think it's an underrated card and i think they really did uh, did this card uh undo on justice by just making it commons and rare i think it would definitely um look nice and secret rare personally next is gonna be tornado wall so again this isn't a um a, not really a, a playable card it's got a pretty cool effect i mean back in the day there were some combos to it um it's not something you're really gonna see much in play in 2021 or in future events that i can foresee unless there's more support that specifically comes out for uh umi but um going back to, again of an, an, an iconic i think personally i mean i think this was i'm pretty sure that this was used in the season one anime series as well so that's a thing uh labyrinth of nightmare generation one going all back to the original print we have see we have five variants here all commons uh, again this i think a secret rare or even a super rare would look really really great this is a really terrible photo it's super blurry but a really iconic card for generation one a lot of people like to run this and like the whole combo behind it so i think because of its infamy it definitely deserves a hollow foil update next is going to be some fusion monsters starting with the first dark lord so this is a solo print rise of the duelist was the dawning set this is a really good fusion i like this fusion a lot i think it has some pretty cool effects really killer artwork and i may be a little biased but i personally like dark lords uh, a lot i think it's a really fun deck it's a relatively simplistic engine and it's just a really fun deck. A lot of them have like these recycle effects and a lot of like spam special summoning. It's really, really fun to play. Really cool artwork and there's some really great rarities. I really do not know why they made this a super. I think this definitely deserves secret rare treatment. And yeah, that's pretty much all I'm going to say about that. Next is going to be Ab Zero. So I am by no means a hero fan, but I really love myself some Ab Zero. Absolute Zero is by far one of my all time favorite hero there there's a very few um that i actually do like it's actually acid and 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 ab zero are are i just I, I don't know i really like those cards i really like their effects i really like their artwork and um they're they're probably like if anything again like there's the heroes just they have so much support and they have some of the, like the craziest fusions so um i wanted to showcase ab zero ab zero is just really cool i love the artwork and again the the rarities are kind of obscure we have you know this ultra rare promo and then we have uh the generation force uh special edition super which uh, apparently a lot of these are, are out of stock is this even a thing is this is serious that there's maybe for specifically for these i don't know i'm not really sure what's going on here why it's saying that these are out of stock. Has there been, was there a buyout? Am I discovering a buyout now for um, for Ab Zero? What's going on here? So apparently for Near Mint Ali Play, there, there's no variants of this special edition promo, which is very strange. Um, I'm not really sure. Um, not really sure why that is. Highest rarity being an ultra rare again. This promo. And there's a f several more variants, about two pages of this. Sorry, mark price roughly on 10 bones. Um, if that's is, what is this? Okay, so 
I don't know, someone did someone sharpie this or color it, they changed it. Um Yeah, it looks like they, they, they did they did something here. So more like uh, th around thirty five bones. Anyway, uh again, really great artwork, really killer effect, and I just there's something about this card. I just really I really like this card a lot. And um, I think it's, you know, utterly disgusting that we got ultra rare variants, but not a secret rare. I think this card is definitely worthy of a secret rare, uh, rarity update, personally. Alright, next is gonna be First of the Dragons. So, I'm kind of skeptical about this. Uh, there's certain limitations to this card that, um, I'm kind of, I was kind of on the fence about showcasing it but i wanted to kind of go in order and showcase a couple fusions showcase a couple normal monsters and showcase a couple effect monsters so this kind of made the list at least for this point so um i wanted to go over this really quick uh interesting enough there's actually four different super rare variants like konami got like over over reductive with their uh, super prints there's the new challengers original supers there was a the 2015 mirrored supers um a um, actually, I'm sorry, three. These are commons that this was super. So these variants, and there's an actual third super rare variant, which was actually the new Challenger Special Edition promos, were also super rare. So plenty of to go around for the super rare variants. Um, I wanted to talk more specifically about secret rare. I do like the artwork a lot on this. I think this artwork is really, really cool. Here's the effect right here for you guys that don't know uh, what this card does. It's pretty neat. It's pretty, pretty unique. Um, and you know fusions are just gorgeous in general i i think you know purple cards are are pretty cool so um yeah i think a secret rare would definitely be suiting for first of the dragons so next is going to be not really so much a rarity update because I mean, we already do have a super rare a hollow foil variant of this and originally i was thinking about only showcasing like specifically just commons um, commons that were either underrated or commons that you know are just your know, solo prints or just they're only manufactured in commons to uh, be specifically for the rarity updates but then I wanted to kind of have more diversity and I kind of wanted to expand and kind of go beyond that so I didn't really limit myself and this is the first time I've done this type of video I, I want to start to develop a kind of like a, a mini series of like rarity upgrades where I kind of focus on on what cards I think need rarity upgrades so um, but this card is actually if they produce a secret rare, I think this is worthy of being a secret rare. It's nice that we Dragons of Legends reprinted as this hollow foil is super rare. Um, but this card is just, I think it's really good and no one really knows about this. And the best thing about this is this part right here. So it's a continuous magic card, so it stays on the field, you know, as long as it doesn't get like Twin Twister and MST or whatever have you cyclone but none of your water monsters so you know the extra stuff you know the special summoning and the specifically being for the aqua actresses is pretty cool but this is a dead giveaway of just how underrated that this card is i know that there's not necessarily fire i think fire and water get a little shafted i think obviously the majority of the support gets dominated heavily uh, by light and dark decks and there's a significant amount of, of, of earth as well. Um, but for water and fire specifically, the you know, you know, Atlanteans and, and Mermill Atlantean is, is probably one of the most infamous water decks, and then you know, like um, Frog Monarchs or Frog Totally Awesome, whatever have you, um, are probably some of the more popularized water decks. And then as far as fire, I mean we have Salaman Grates for a while, and those are still kind of um, around as well. And um, but other than that, I mean, they're, they're just very limited. They're, there's not as an abundance of diversity and support like there is for, like, light and dark decks and earth decks. And, um, but if people, like, there are really cool water cards and there are really cool, like, creative water builds. And I think that this is, like, a really great card for that. So, uh, and, you know, it, it's kind of just an obscure, they just chucked it in this, this subset here. Um, but I think this is really great. I think this is a really underrated card. I, I personally bought a couple. I think I bought like um, three play sets or something um, of the first edition Nearmint Supers just because um, I, I, I just I think that's really powerful and I think that's really underrated. So I don't want to go overboard um, with that. But again, I think uh, because of this effect specifically, how it's just it's not generic to like a deck type or to um, I mean like an like a, a um, 
I don't know how to say it, but it's like all waters, like it's attribute Y, like all all of your water monsters cannot be destroyed by battle, which I think is is pretty cool. All right, next is gonna be Burning Land. So two variants, both commons. OG was from Feral Servant, and then Dark Beginning reprint. Um, really cool original uh, magic stamp here for the OG print. This is really cool. Um, artwork's a little kind of elementary, very basic. Um, not really a lot of crazy detail or anything, but this is extremely old. You can kind of see a trend here. I'm a, a huge fan of Generation 1 cards, and I cover a lot of my material is, is rounded off of Generation 1 stuff. I just can't really seem to get away from it. It's definitely my my greatest fascination in this game for that sector of investing in collectability for collectability purposes. Um, but this... Uh, the, the fact that you can you know blow up all field spells and then... Um, Field magic cards, field spells, um, and then you can do burn damage. And I'm not saying that this will see play by any by any means. I mean, maybe it will, um, but it it's like kind of like when you when you're when you go into time or you're going to burning. Maybe this will be like a like a side card. Maybe not. I'm probably like taking this like way too far. But I think that this this deserves at least like a super rare. Like maybe like an OTS super rare. If I'm so bold to say maybe a secret rare, but maybe like an OTS super rare. I just think a hollow variant of this would be um, would make it a cool would make it a cool a side card, cool a cool side card to have potentially. So. Uh, next is going to be Gravekeeper's Servant. So this is an interesting card because there's actually a censored ship that was actually um, kind of ran through the system undetected. We have the original magic stamps from Magic Ruler, and you can actually see the crucifixes, uh, the cross graves here. And then it also that happened in, I believe, the Dark Beginning print as well. You can see the crosses. But then when we move into the later prints, uh, like the Retro Pack 1, you can see the censorship was edited and there is no cross gravestones. The crucifixes were taken out as well as the Dark Legends uh, reprint. So interesting enough on that. This card has really great artwork. There's a really just obnoxious lock with like Banisher of the Radiance or Banisher of the Light or Macro Cosmos um, that, you know, it completely locks your opponent out from being able to attack you directly or your monsters or anything. It's a lot of people don't like it. I think it's a it's a pretty funny uh, lock. I personally used it several times back when I was playing my DD deck back when we had three Cosmos, three Skill Drain and it was it was a really good time. I'm still really hoping that you know Konami starts to unlock those 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 floodgates. Uh, Skill Drain and Macro Cosmos is like some of the most powerful and just most iconic floodgates to me personally. And I just I'm I'm a big anti-meta player, so I think it's really fun. Anyway, really great artwork, really cool history merit behind the um, the censorship, and then uh, a secret rare. So again, this is a very very old. It's a Generation One card. And um, it, it, especially with the artwork, I love how it's like the spooky Halloween um, themed kind of artwork. And I think this would just look gorgeous, like gorgeous in Secret Rare, like deep. I can like visualize it now, deep Secret Rare hollow foils. And it would just look really, really great. Unfortunately, the reprints are going to have uh, the, the spell card stamp instead of the OG magic card. That would be, be interesting. It would be really cool if Konami did. I know they had the kind of whole like legal issues, but if it was somehow that they could produce a set, maybe like a limited time set or kind of do a, a reach around where... Um, they could actually predict, uh, manufacture magic stamp, magic cards again. That would be really cool. That would be like a really like throwback nostalgia. Okay, next is going to be Dream Clown. So Dream Clown, again, um, not really going to see play potentially unless there's like a clown specific set to support that comes out or a whole deck based round. But this was a very, very iconic card. And it did see a lot of play, especially when Legacy of Darkness was released. We got Marauding Captain, which gave us abilities to special summon warriors from the hand. Or uh, not warrior specifically. I think it was just level four or lowers. Anyway, Marion Captain again, another just iconic, amazing Generation One card. Um, but this this saw some pretty prevalent play in Generation One, from what I can call recall, and a kind of silly artwork. But it's more so the colors of this card that I really really enjoy, and what makes me believe that a secret rare rarity update would be just gorgeous for this card. As you can see, obviously uh, three variants all common. 
And there's just something about this kind of like rainbow cotton candy looking coloring of this card that I think will just pop so beautifully in Secret Rare Hollow Foil. So that's uh that's what I that's what I'm saying about DreamCon. I think DreamCon would look great and definitely an, an iconic enough card and uh, used enough card in Generation 1 that it definitely deserves a Secret Rare reprint. All right, next is going to be Graffa. So I am a, an, a huge uh, fanatic for uh, Dark World. I love, love, love Dark World. Um, the G Gates of the Underworld structure deck was released shortly after me. Coming back into the game, I, I played the game originally when I, when I was a kid, you know, in like 2002 era to about like 2004 i would say and then I, I i kept all my cards but i stopped playing and then it wasn't until the summer after senior year of high school graduated high school in 2011 so it was the summer of 2011 uh that i got back into the game found a comic sh a, c a comic book shop and started going to tournaments and you know made Yu -Gi Oh friends again and um, th this was like the first actual, like somewhat kind of like competitive, like up to date deck that I played coming back into the game was, uh, was the uh, Dark World. And, um, this is just a really iconic deck for me. This was a really special time. It kind of signifies me kind of come returning to the game, returning to the passion of the game and kind of just, you know, resetting like my Yu-Gi-Oh life in general. And I've kind of just been you know going ever since, you know, going strong since 2011. So really significant to me, really fun and I, really simple mechanics, really easy deck to kind of play through a lot of diversity. There's a lot of like, this is just one of those decks you can blend a lot, kind of like Shadal's kind of like Light Sworn. There's a lot of blending and mixing. You can do a lot of customizations and this just has amazing artwork. I love the artwork and we have really bad rarities, um, all pretty much ultra rare. Um, and these are just terrible, terrible ultra rares, and then, like, this, this, this goofy, like, slash rare, slash gold, slash common, but I personally believe, I'm so bold to say, I really think an ultimate rare, or even a secret rare, a secret rare or ultimate rare, whatever comes first, probably more than likely a secret rare, but by far, this card totally deserves a secret rare. I might be being a little biased, there is a lot of personal value that I hold behind Grafa, but being just a, you know, um, and I, I kind of feel like Dark World has kind of lived through the trials and stipulations, you know, there was that stent when they danger Dark World, and there was the whole loop that was just completely degrading, um, but you know it, it's it's a really fun it's a really fun um i don't even know uh, what to call it it's a really fun uh, mechanism deck and just i i think it's really cool like pitching and, and using graveyard effects and all that and you get you draw a lot there's a lot of usually if it's played i think if it's played right there should be a lot of draw power involved you know with like the drag downs and the um dark deals and you know, uh, potentially reckless greeds and upstart. Anyway, it's just a really fun deck. So I, I think that a secret rare and ultimate rare would just be amazing for this card. All right, next is going to be Satellar Knight Deneb. So like Dark World, I'm a huge fan of Satellar Knights. I really, really love them a lot. Probably by far one of my favorite light decks. Um, probably up there, you know, I mean, even more so than Light Sworn. I love Light Sworn because they're so splashable. You can mix them into so many different things. Um, but, uh, this is, uh, by far, um, my, f one of, one of, by far, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite light decks. And they're both ultra rare prints, you know, original, uh, du Duelist Alliance ultras. And then we have the mirrored ultra rare, um, reprint from the Megatins 2015. Secret Rare. I think this would look amazing. See where? Well, let's go ahead and, and get a close up. The artwork, first of all, is just amazing on this card. You have the whole like trifecta of like Shadal's Burning Abyss and uh, Satellar Knights, that whole kind of era, which is really cool. And I, I think the overall, in general, these are these are really this is a maybe not specifically Satellar Knight, but that like trifecta. There's a, like a big player base of fanboys out there that really enjoy those three decks, and this has really great artwork again I, I really it's kind of hard to see it's kind of a little blurry picture but it's it, it's kind of like 
star like warriors looking things and shiny armor and just really immaculate really cool bright vivid all that great stuff so and again i just i really like this deck a lot obviously this is like you know the main card searcher card you know iconics teller knight card and it's just really sad it's really sad that we have ultra rares i mean i'm, I'm thankful that we have hollow foils they didn't make this something like crazy like a common or anything it's way too good for that but i think it you know with this being you know it 2015 release you know it's quite some time ago you now going almost seven years so this definitely deserves a secret rare hollow foil um upgrade all right next is going to be giant orc so again going back to that generation one era you know we have our original og prints from dark magician or magician's force apologies and then we have our um uh, dark dark rev um, reprints here I'm gonna say secret rare for this maybe even super rare but more specifically secret rare um, it's not like this is like a super like ridiculously like, playable card it, it definitely kind of got like washed down um, over the, the the power creep of the game over time um, but this again it, it back in the generation one it did see a lot of play personally me I, I played a lot of decks with you know beater decks um, even, even like back in like when I first came back in, there was a couple variants, you know, with like Macrocosmos and Skill Drain. I was using beater decks with like the uh, Malefic cards and uh, Giant Orc and Goblin Attack Force and you know Soup Up cards. I think like even like I was still running like Mage Power and um, United We Stand. And it was just, I don't know, it just it was just fun, fun, simple, just really mechanics. And um, I just think there's something about this card. I just think this card would look really great, you know, with the black and the green. It would look really cool with the secret hollow foils. And it's just me personally. Again, I I, I played this a lot as a kid um, in Generation One Yu-Gi-Oh. So I appreciate the card a lot. The last card isn't going to be so much of a rarity update. This is kind of where I branched off just slightly. I wanted to end on, on a babe card. I, I call this a babe card. I think this card has really, really cool artwork. We do have this ultimate rare here, which is really cool, going all the way back to Astral Pack 1, pretty legendary in age. And then we have the very infamous Duelist Saga, very unique to its own merit alone, um, like lightsaber-looking ultra-rare hollow foils. One of the very few ultra rare variants that i actually do enjoy personally myself and um so anyway I, I i don't know there's something about this card it just i wanted to, I, I enjoy this card a lot it's not that it's like a super playable card obviously everyone knows that this is you know a big deal for um a big deal for a goat goat format players and all that but um it is, it's relatively ex expensive. I mean, it's it's up there in age now, and it is high rarity of ultimate rare. You know, Astro Pack 1 being the very first pack, so really great history merit. And we can see here, I mean, it's potentially like 110 bones, and then it kind of just trickles up. Only two pages of availability on that. So just an all-around really great card in general. Um, I, I would like to see a secret rare. I mean, I think personally, again, like I'm... I'm a really big secret rare uh, fan, so I think it is nice that we have this ultimate, but it's just kind of hard to get. I mean, it's pretty old and it's pretty expensive. It's like 100 plus bones, so financially it's kind of um, uh, a little bit more difficult to get. And then, you know, the, the ultras are like five, six, roughly, for, you know, near mint first editions or so. So, uh, oh, there's some Italian ones. Those look really cool. I can't resist. I have to. I'm I'm like borderline obsessed with Italian, German, French. Um, cards are, are are really cool. Those look really nice. Anyway, okay. So night dreaming over. So secret rare variant I think would be pretty cool for this, and uh, sometime in the Yu-Gi-Oh realm. Thank you so much for watching these videos i really appreciate all of your guys' support your comments you guys are great Yu Gi Oh has been a big part of my life for many years now it's a great passion of mine i love the deck building the brotherhood the uniqueness the creativity the investment values there's so many amazing things that go into this hobby that just make it so much fun and it's a really great community to be a part of um, I don't know, again, I try to kind of go off and, and do something different with this video, so if you guys have an opinion or you have something you want to voice about 
maybe um, anything. I, I, I love feedback. I'm trying to improve and just get better. And I'm really just trying to build a community with this channel. So uh, that's that's my biggest goal is building a community and bettering myself and just trying to make um, content that you guys will enjoy and kind of stay unique. That's like a big thing. I really want to continue to try to strive to be kind of unique, specifically in like the market watch realm of Yugi, 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 Yugi Tube. But um, I, I just really appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you so much for um, just uh, being part of this in general. It's a really crazy world. Please remember to take care of each other. Uh, there, there's so many issues out there in the world. Isolationism, depression, loneliness. Please be a friend. Be a brother. Be a sister. Just be there for each other. I hope you guys are making some fantastic... Yu-Gi-Oh! investments yourself. This has been a showcasing by The White Mexican, and I will see you in the next video.